Oh man, that is a good cuppa. So, where are we today? Well, I'm up in the uh, dwelling up area. Um, more specifically, I'm in Lane Pool Reserve. Where I want to head today is down the fire line track. If you go up further around behind all the campsites, you've got uh, Charlie's Flats, you've got Island Pool, which is a day use area, Tony's Bend, Yarragul, all those campsites that are on the Murray River, once you get past them. Then there's this track called the Fire Line. Uh, so today, I'm going to drive, I'm going to drive that um, just to the end. You can also link it with the Captain Fawcett track. Um, I would have done that as well, but it's still not open. I'm pretty sure it's still shut from winter. So I'll just do the fire line today. We'll follow that all along. It kind of, it stays on the east side of the Murray River the entire way. Um, it cuts right close to it at points, but then it will sort of veer off as well, and then you come back to it. Uh, it also travels along part of the Bibliman track, so a lot of the walkers for the Bibliman will also use this road as well. Now I'm going to knock some air out of these tyres, I'll probably go down to about maybe 22 or so. Um, it's, not, it's not crazy driving, I still would recommend a four-wheel drive, or at least an all-wheel drive. Um, but it is an easy drive. This is something that if I've got a day off um, or a day spare on the on the weekend um, and I want to get out and I want to do something where I don't feel like doing anything crazy, I'm on my own. It's just me and old mate Gus here and I just want to um, just want to get bush and go somewhere nice. Um, I'll pack some food and I'll do something like this. This is exactly to the T exactly what I would do on a day like this where I'm not doing anything and I just want to get out. I'll knock some air out of these boots and we'll get into it. Alrighty. Oh, bag me tyres out. I haven't locked me hubs though. Let's see how we go. I'm not anticipating it to be too bad. It does get a bit of water out on this track. Um, sometimes mud, but not anything that's too too drastic. I've um, I've come through the Lane Pool Baden Powell entry. Usually, I will go down to the Nanga entry and I'll come through Nanga, and then I'll cross Bob's Crossing. Um, but I had word over the weekend that Bob's Crossing is actually overflown. So I'm more than confident they would have shut the gate because I usually do it the slightest, the slightest sniff of the water coming over that concrete bridge, they'll shut the gate. Um, so I didn't want to go all the way around only to find out the gate's shut and I can't get through. So that's interesting. I've just, oh wow, it's not even close to being over the top. Oh, that's weird. How's that? Just on the weekend I'd seen, I'd literally seen a photo of this being up over the concrete, over this bridge, overflowing. So I could have guaranteed they would have had it shut, but just in that couple of days, that was Saturday I saw that, and that's now Monday. It's just back to normal flow. That is incredible. I'm stunned. See, it just goes to show you how quick things can change out here. See, we had a we had a pretty decent downpour through the week and that would have made it all the way up to the top of the Darling. Obviously all that water's been caught and it's run down the Murray. But uh, just like that, it just subsides. You get a few clear days, the water runs off and it all subsides. So I'm stunned. There you go, well it's open. Oh well, I did do all that extra driving and all that corrugation for nothing. Spewing. God, I hate that drive. Woeful. made me turn off uh, River Road, I've just gone past the Aragal campsite, which is the last campsite. Back in the day there used to be a, a handful of campsites down here. Um, man, some doozy potholes. Uh, yeah, a, a handful of campsites were down here. Uh, accessible right down on the river bank. Beautiful spots. Um, but of course they've 
they've stopped that now. You can only camp in those designated sites there. I'm not gonna lie, I still I still do camp there. I, I have a particular spot in Tony's Bend that I love to camp in. Uh, and I camp there quite a lot. But when it comes to just wanting to do a quick, well, you know, a reasonably quick trip, straight up the hill, get the dwelling up, uh, do a one-nighter or, so, or whatever, and you just want to be in this particular area, I still camp there. It is what it is. Um, so anyway, back in the day, there was a handful of campsites that were along the river out here. The spots are still, for the most part, accessible. A few aren't. Most of them are. Um, I'm going to be going to one of those spots to cook some lunch. Um, so it's a shame that you can't camp there still, but I don't know, man. Politics just gets in the way of everything. They've spent so much money out here redeveloping the place, and I guess they're trying to get every bit of buck they can from everyone, and they're only allowing people to camp in the spots they're supposed to. So. Tails just up in a tree, just there. See red tails all through this area. They go nuts on all this jarra and the Mary. Oh, that's nice. So I've just, uh, for, the, for those of you that are playing at home, I've just come to a intersection here on this track. This is where I think formally on map it says this is where it turns to the fire line. Um, backing up so I can take the intersection um, so if you go straight ahead the track carries on straight ahead and it goes straight to the Murray River it goes through a little point a little bend um, a little access point that used to be a campsite I'm sure people still do I, I have no idea I don't know I know the Rangers get out here a fair bit um, and they will probably come and check you out at some point especially on a weekend so I've, t I've taken the left, if you go straight you'll go to that spot, if you go left you'll officially get onto the fire line, which is what I'm doing now. So for those of you playing at home and you want to come and do this drive yourself, just make a note of that. Turn left. The flowers are beautiful. Just this beautiful, long, skinny channel at the moment of these beautiful...
as you wind and twist your way through this drive um, the bush is dense and thick the entire way um, it's had a series of burns through here I think I think the latest one being maybe 2013 2014 maybe um, I'm not exactly sure on that but I think around that time um, and it, you can see just how thick and lush uh, and, and beautifully the bushes come back it's it's just so dense um, all these juvenile gums all the wattle the undergrowth the wattle the mimosa um, it's it's just a bushfire to to a big degree obviously is devastating absolutely devastating but the regrowth and the rejuvenation that it brings out especially in our real dense jarra forest like this um, when it rejuvenates and it comes back in some cases you only need to let it be a month or two and you'll see green start coming back but this now Five, six, seven years later, it's just it just comes back and it thrives and it's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful thing to see. You've got these beautiful big black trunks pushing up to the skies through this amazing beautiful green juvenile understory. And it's just it tells a story, you know, you can almost by the growth of the, re, the, the rejuvenation, you can almost tell uh, how long ago the fire was, you know, how, how long ago the fire came through. Uh, and this through here is absolutely no exception. It is just, it's just stunning. Again, big fires aren't that nice, but in this, uh, in the bush like this, Absolutely stunning to see. So I've just got to me a little spot along here of the fire line. Just driving down into it now. A little bit of erosion on the track. Nothing too serious. Just cruising down first gear. Easy does it. Easy, easy, peasy. Well, I've just got to uh, the steeper part that drives you down to the riverbank. Um, and the whole lot's pretty washed out and eroded. Doesn't look like it's been driven in a long time. Um, a long time. So, but it's all right. It looks doable, it looks passable. But then, even if I get down there, there's nowhere to even park or even really to turn around. Um, so I'm spewing. The water level down there is actually really high. Um, so there's no... Yeah, that's fascinating. I'm surprised there's no bank down there. I've been out here in August. Water levels have been alright. Out here now, middle of September, and yeah, water's quite high. So I could get down there and... See, I'm glad I walked it. I'm glad I went down and, and uh, had a look first because if I had to just... Uh, just wung it and kept going, kept going down. I would probably be having to reverse my way right back up. All that, and that would have been far from ideal. So that's a shame. What's it doing? I'm getting bloody hungry too. So I think I'm just going to have to push on to the rest of this, uh, push on to the rest of this fire line and um, park up somewhere at the end. What a doozy. So I've just come across some uh, pretty gnarly water erosion. Um, well, they're originally they're ruts, I would say, from, it's a big, it's a big incline, a big ascent. Um, and I would say through the winter, the cars are struggling for traction, dug the track out, it rains, the water comes, 
um, erodes them and damages them even more. Some of these, my goodness, look at that. Some of these ruts are a good, oh, they'd be knee deep at least. Wow. But I'm just straddling it. No issue at all, first gear, high range. Just straddling, that's fine. What a doozy, wow. Yeah, about knee deep, look at that. Oh, I'll tell you what, if you're in a small wheel car, you wouldn't be getting far. Wouldn't be getting far at all. It's nice and hard now, and there's no reason to be in the rut anyway. You can straddle this whichever way you want, but yeah. What a doozy. Oh, bear that in mind if you're in a small tyre car. Just straddle it. I mean, even me on the 35s, I still straddle it anyway. There's no need to. to you're just going to chew it out, trying to force yourself up. So, anyway, nature of the tracks. Good fun. Look at this very last little bog hole. Looks like someone's coming. Tried to cut or has started cutting a chicken track around the main one. And the chicken track looks diabolical. It looks even worse than the original one. <laughs> that original puddle was never giving me any trouble, so I don't know why someone's come and cut this through. Anyway. the end of the fire line. I'm just going to drive over this cute little bridge here. Stunning, all the paper barks in the water. Beautiful little spot this one. Sniff with your nose hard enough, I'm sure you'll all find this little spot. Ah, uh, yes. This is the one. Beautiful. Ah, uh, yeah. This will do me very nicely for a little bit of tucker. Bloody beautiful. Have a go at this. Well, I'll tell you what, I find this completely acceptable. Happy days. I'm good. Very, very nice. Right on the banks of the Murray River. Gonna enjoy this drink. Get some lunch on. <laughs> More like an Arvo snack now. It's gonna be dinner soon. Oh well. 
See how the cookie crumbles, eh? I've also got stickers available. Uh, some of you may or may not know, but you can get them at my big cartel. I'll just have the info for that down the bottom. Six bucks each. Feel free to go there and grab yourself a sticker if you would like one. Yeah, I'll grab two. I don't care. So anyway, that's it from me. I'm going to... What am I going to do? Nothing. I'm going to eat. That's about it. That's all i got to do. And enjoy this. Spewing, what a shame, eh? Man. That's why we own full drives, folks. Get out there amongst it. Alright. It's time for me to go get some grub on. Thanks for watching. We'll talk soon. Stay safe. Bye-bye.